into cooking with Jennifer Farrell. It's me. What's up? How's it going? Um, and today, before we get started, I just want to say if you like the video, hit the bell, like, subscribe, share. Um, and I'm going to do something slightly special here. Uh, when I can get to 100 subscribers, because this is a baby channel, we're only itty bitty, we hit double digits, but still. When I can get to 100 subscribers, I'm going to randomly generate the system that's going to pick one of you people, one of you subscribers, and I'm going to send you at my complete cost one of my favorite kitchen gadgets. And every time I kind of hit a milestone, I'm just going to keep upping it. So keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. Alright. Yo, you know you live in Canada when you get four seasons all in a day and you start the morning and it's snowing. It is May. <laughs> so we are totally going to do a stick to the ribs kind of meal. So we are going to make a beef stew and then we're also going to stuff that in a lovely homemade bread bowl. So let's get started, shall we? All right, in addition to this being a stick to your ribs kind of meal, one of the things about my channel that I adore is that I try to make things as more budget friendly as possible, especially for families and singles. So I went to Walmart um, as soon as they put out their the reduced meat. So it's still cool beans, it's still good. You still got lots of time on it. I just stick it in the freezer. That's when I can get meals like that. And I got a really nice steak here for like, 391 so it wouldn't have been too bad it would have been closer to like 550 regular price but 391 is the starting point for our protein here okay and you can bless to totally feed six people off of the meal here that I'm going to show you all right so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut it into strips going against the grain right because we don't want it to be tough and then we're going to cut it into cubes and I am just going to trim some of the fat around I'll do that when I get there okay and I'm going to season it before flash frying it okay so flash frying it first of all I've in my pot I've got a tablespoon of olive oil heated up and I'm going to season this beautiful buff okay and I've got a tablespoon of paprika a tablespoon of oregano a uh, teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. So once I cut these into chunks, I'm just gonna kind of roll the meat. So here's what I mean about the grain, okay? So here, you can see the grain. If I cut with that, I'm gonna have tough meat. So I'm gonna cut against it, okay? I mean, it's gonna go in the slow cooker for eight hours. So legit, there's no way this is gonna be tough anyways. But if you didn't have if you just wanted to, you know, cook it up and fry it, that's how you would do it so that you would have a more tender piece of meat. So once you cut them, throw them in your bowl with your seasonings, and then we're going to toss them around a little bit like a rag doll before they go in for a fry. All right, we've got our meat all nice and coated here. Okay, so we're going to go over to the screeching hot pan. It's going to make some noise because it's like no fire hot oh man I remember myself no ah oh, bless all right let's turn you back up now that you're in there we're just gonna space them out okay and we're not going to like turn them right now we're not gonna touch them we're just gonna let them chill they're happy you know, we're gonna let them get brown because whoops, brown food is good food. Bless, you got this. All right, again, we're gonna let it hang out. We're gonna get it nice and crusty, and then we're gonna give them a good turn. In the meantime, we are going to get the rest of our crock pot ingredients here going. Uh, let's get it plugged in, shall we? Okay, so I'm using a full thing of chicken broth here. I may go for a second one. It's just going to see, I'm going to see what the volume is after everything, all the ingredients are in uh, in here. Of course, beef stock would be fantastic. Again, I thought I had it. I don't, I don't have any beef bouillon cubes. <sighs> Hashtag the life of a mom, you know? Like sometimes 
Things don't always work out the way you want it to. And you just roll with the punches, okay? It's still going to be yummy. It's still going to be flavorful. They're still going to eat it. And so am I. In here, I've got three carrots, okay, that I have chopped. Now, I chopped them a little thick, okay? But they're going for eight hours on low in here. So they're still going to be lovely and tender, but I wanted them to hold up a little bit more. Same with my mushrooms. I did cut them a little thicker. Um, so I've got a small canister, like a small container of mushrooms, so about seven to eight large mushrooms. Uh, I've got three carrots, large carrots that I chopped. Um, I've got about a cup and a quarter here of peas. I have four medium-sized potatoes. Plus, I think that'll be good. So we're just going to go ahead. And we're going to dump that all in. And because the bra, the meat's going to go in here anyways, and this is all going to cook, I'm going to use the same, same thing, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a canister, uh, or not a canister, I'm going to add a packet of onion soup mix. But it's looking like our book, our beef here is ready to turn, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so look at that meat. It's nice, it's crusty, it's beautiful. So we're gonna get it out and we're gonna throw it right into our crock pot, but we're not going to drain the liquid. We're gonna try and reserve as much of that liquid in there as possible, and I'll show you why. So just take out the buff and put it in the crock pot. Now look at all that flavor, okay? We drained it, we took out the beef, very careful to reserve this. Look at all that. Now we could just add it to the crock pot the way it is and plus we'd still get flavor in there. But what I'm gonna do here is I have uh, diced up, sliced up uh, two cloves of garlic in a shallot. Now if you don't have a shallot, uh, as always, you can use onion. That's what I had and that's what I prefer. And we're just going to saute it in that lovely, beef stock and rendering and we're gonna get it all nice and delicious and then we will transfer the rest of this into the crock pot. So here's the crock pot. We, I just added the buff and the onion soup mix and we're gonna give this a nice stir. I did turn it up, uh, turn it on to low already because it's just about nine o'clock here slightly after, quarter after, and I'm going to let this go for a good eight hours. Um, I do have some running around to do today. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day! Um, so yeah, I'm going to go see my mom's. I'm going to go on a road trip to go and see her because she lives far. Alright. And I likely will add probably another canister of stock, wishing I had both, but I don't. And yeah. But again, it's going to, the amount of stock you, you put in there is going to depend on the size of the vessel and like the size of the crock pot you're using, right? So these are looking really nice. They're starting to get a little soft and the dog is starting to get a little fried, which is beautiful. Right, and this is just going to add an extra dimension of, of flavor to our, our stew here. And I'm not a huge stew fan, but when you take the time and you do it right, how could you not, right? Beautiful. They're all nice and fried and delicious. Perfect time. I'm going to go ahead and throw these in the crock pot. Now, I've said it before, I'm not a huge onion fan. If you want more onions, I would do two onions in here. My family could take it or leave it, mostly because I'm the one who cooks and I don't like them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in there, but know that you can always increase an ingredient if that is the ingredient you like. Or in the same breath, decrease if you're like, mushrooms, not my jam. Totally cool. Omit them and throw in something else, maybe a parsnip. Okay, so I added in another canister of uh, stock. It's looking delicious. Wish I could eat it, but we'll see you in eight hours. Okay, so to this, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of cornstarch, and we're going... <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I thought I had more cornstarch. We're gonna go with flour. Flour is just as good too. This is a good substitution rule. Like where there's a will, there's a way. So we're gonna add three tablespoons of flour to our slurry here and we're gonna mix well. All right, so we got our three tablespoons in and we're literally just going to mix the bejesus out of it because we don't want this to be clumpy in there, right? If we just add it straight in there like this and hope for the best, we're going to have like clump stew. So what I'm going to do is uh, put this down and use two hands. Again, this is where a tripod would help me out and I'm going to mix it really well. So I'm just getting a whisk and I'm just it's super, super thick, obviously, so this is going to totally, and the flour will cook out in the slow cooker as well. Okay, so we're going to add this. I'm out of space here. Oh, so if you notice, this used to be where my countertop oven was. She died. She died. So, on the hunt now for a new one and that was some peas that uh, inadvertently snuck in when my thing fell okay and then we're gonna give it a nice stir and we're gonna put the lid back on and let it go for another two hours see you soon Okay, so the joys of substitution is that you've got someone else here trying it out first before you. So uh, it was much too loose with the flour as I don't have my cornstarch. So I had to use a half a cup of flour with a whole lot of uh, juice here, but I finally got it to a nice consistency that I like. I've been cooking it out for the last half hour. So that's lovely. It tastes divine, which is great. So we didn't compromise on flavor. So once my bread bowl vessels are done, we will pour it in, but it's looking mighty fine. I almost forgot the most important part, the breakdown. Okay, so the bread was $2. The stew was $3.91, so let's round it up to $4. So we're at six. Between the potatoes, and the mushrooms and the carrots and the onions, let's say another $3, let's be generous. So $9 got me four bread, served four with enough leftovers in here to feed another four. So don't have to do the bread bowl, that was just me, but totally low budget, totally healthy, totally yummy, stick to your ribs. Oh my gosh, enjoy.